Um, so to, again, further understand, guys, we have the sine of x is equal to negative 1 half. And again, we've got to undo the sine, right? And we explain we undo addition by subtraction. We undo multiplication by division. But we undo sine, we're like, we don't have a concept of this as far as like, what to do. Now, obviously, we can see in our notes we're using the sine inverse, but let's make a little bit more sense of that. So again, I really want to, um, really want to drill this down is, like, what are we taking the sine of? And again, this goes back to our understanding of the sine function from triangles. So let's pretend we had 30 degrees, 5, 10, 5 square root of 3, right? And this could be like in section 1. I said, hey, find the, write an expression like sine for that triangle. And what you guys would write is you'd write sine of 30 degrees equals 5 over 10, right? But the important thing you guys are doing is sine of 30 degrees, sine of an angle, yes? So when we want to solve this, when we use our inverse operation, and that's, that's exactly what the inverse function is, it's the inverse operation of sine. So to solve for x here, to undo sine, we're just going to take the sine inverse of sine of x on both sides. Obviously, sine inverse and sine are going to undo each other. And we're left with the sine inverse of negative 1 half. But this is where a lot of students get tripped up. They remember the sine of an angle, right? But again, what are, when I do the sine inverse of negative 1 half, what question am I asking myself? I'm asking myself, the sine of what is equal to negative 1 half, right? The sine of what angle? So when you're solving these problems, or evaluating, which we're going to do, you're looking for an angle. Okay, so when you need to find a ratio of, you know, of remember the three trigonometric functions: sine, cosine, tangent. Those are all ratios based on sides of the triangle, correct? And they're all relative to the angle. You always take the sine of an angle, cosine of an angle, tangent of an angle. So now, when we're using these inverse functions, just remember you're trying to find the angle. Okay, but there is. Um, there is a problem. So, so that's basically what this looks like. And then we'll go ahead and answer, um, answer this. But now, yeah, so that's what that represents. 